John 14. Remember Jesus said that, uh, first of all, he said, don't, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. That would be just a good word today for everybody to hear. Just, you know, regardless of the shape of the circumstances and the world that we in, we're in and what's around you, I want you to pause for a moment and hear the word of the Lord that says, Do not fear. Do not fear. Uh, Because you have believed in the Father. He said, Believe in me. And in my Father's house, which I have come to show you, which is called the kingdom of God, the house... There's many places. There's places for you. There's a place for you in his house. You don't have to feel like that you're off wandering around aimless, no purpose. Your life's not important. There's a place for you. You're very important to the Father. Jesus would have us to hear that today. You fit in to the Father's house. If you would hear today that you, you, there's a place for you in the Father's house, and that you fit into the Father's house, you won't have to try to fit into the world to find your place. Let me say that again. (laughs) I just heard my mouth say something. (laughs) If you know that you fit into the Father's house, there's a place for you in the Father's house, you won't try to fit into the world to find your place. Because you already have a place in the Father's house through Jesus. And He's called you to that. And He said, in this Father's house, there's there's a place for you. And and I'm going to come back to you. And that's what He did when He said, I'm going to send another comforter, another one like me, exactly like me. He's going to come to each of you. Could you understand that just for a moment? When the Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, who is the Father, by the way, the promise of the Father, the Spirit, who is the Father, would come. He was not coming to rest upon the life of Jesus in the earth. That's the reason Jesus said, I've got to go, because the Spirit of the Father is going to come now upon each one of you. Hear that. The Spirit of the Father is not going to be contained in me, Jesus would be saying to us, for us to hear the inference of what He was saying. The Spirit of of the Father is not going to be just in me, but the Spirit of the Father is going to come to each one of you. And you're going to find your place in His house. So in verse 3 of John 14, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, you will be there also. Listen to that. I'm going to come again to receive you to myself. Whenever... We talk about what John 1.12 says, that receiving Christ into our life. We also need to include with that, that not only are we to receive Christ, but we are to actually keep pressing in to know that He has received us. It's not, one, it's not just a thing of one-sided to say, I've received Jesus but we need Him to receive us, and we need to know that He receives us. Our confidence, our faith, all depends upon knowing He has received us. And if I know He has received me, then I hadn't got to try to jump through hoops to impress Him because He's already received me. I hadn't got to 
do religious acts of righteousness because I know He's already see, received me. So the question today, do you know that the Father has received you? Or do you still feel like you're an outcast? Do you still feel like that you're on the outside looking in? There's a lot of preaching and teaching that wants to keep you there. There's a lot of doctrines and teachings of men that want to keep you out of the loop, to keep you at an arm's distance from God. Oh, they will say, oh, it, it's going to happen later. But until you get there in the sweet by and by, you're still in, you feel like you're at arm's length. You feel like you're still on the outside. And God doesn't want you to feel like you're on the outside. He wants you to know that He has received you into His house. And if you know that, you have that He has received you, then again, you don't have to spend all this time worrying about, am I saved? Am I saved? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. You get beyond that, and you begin to take on the responsibility of the son that has come home. You remember the prodigal when he came home? Had all these excuses, all these reasonings about and all that he was going to do because he had felt so like a failure. And he, he, he came, came, had all these excuses and telling, oh, Father, just treat me like a hired servant. That's where a lot of the church is. That's where a lot of people have been taught to be. be. Listen, don't listen to a preacher that puts you there. You're not a hired servant. You're not treated like a hired servant. You're treated as sons and daughters of the Most High God. And He's called you to be that. But the, the prodigal, who knew better, of course, and all of us used, we know, we knew better, <laughs> didn't we? We, uh, we knew better, but we did it anyway. We went off over there. But anyway, he had all these reasonings, and the father received him. Gave a big party. But I want you to hear what he did. Don't overlook this. He came and put a robe on him. Gave him shoes. All God's children's got shoes. We I mean, black folks ought to remember that old spiritual. I got shoes. You <laughs> All God's children's got shoes, right? But not only did he put a robe on him and shoes on his feet, he gave him a ring. And the ring said he, he, is, he has authority in this household. He's a son of the Father and he carries weight and authority in this house. He didn't have to make up the fact to earn that. It was a gift to him. And when you know that you're received, you, God gives you gifts. He gives us gifts, a robe of righteousness in the blood of Jesus that covers up all the filth and the mud and the stain that we had received while we were running out there doing our own thing. Away from God, the robe of righteousness getting restored in our soul. As the psalmist said, Lord, restore my, he restores my soul. And the scripture says that, that the word of the Lord is perfect. It's complete. It will restore my soul. When you know that you're accepted by the Father, it's a long, long step in knowing that your soul is restored. Because you're not always wondering do you love me, Lord? Oh, Lord, do you love me? Will you help me today, Lord? Oh, I'll just do anything for you. Quit whining and being like a hired servant. Stop trying to be treated like a hired servant and start stepping up to be a son or a daughter of God. Take on that robe of righteousness. It's a family robe. Put on shoes. A lot of preaching has taught you to sit down and prop your feet up because God does it all while you just sit around and 
wait till you get there. All that's a deception and a lie. The thing is, God gave you shoes. It's called the preparation of the gospel of peace. It's, it's, it's shoes of responsibility. But there has been so much junk preached. I mean, so no wonder people are confused and mixed up and fruitless. Because you believed a bunch of lies. People have believed a bunch of lies. The simple revelation is this, simple revelation. We were lost from the Father. Jesus came, made it possible through His death, burial, and resurrection for us to be restored in fellowship to the Father, to come back and be part of the house. And given a ring. This is better than a championship ring. <laughs> championship rings are good. Congratulations, Eli, <laughs> on the championship. But the thing is that championship rings are just like the one I've got. It's stuck in a drawer somewhere. I don't know where it is. Because somebody else won it anyway. <laughs> Not me. Jesus has won for us and He's building His house and he, he wants you to understand He invites you into His house to be a son and daughter and for us to know that He has received us. He has received us. Stop whining. Stop complaining. Stop wondering. Stop worrying. If you don't know, seek till you find. See, there's not a shortcut in that. I can't answer, nobody can answer all your questions. Because there's a, there's a place in God that God has reserved for each one of us that we get desperate enough that we will seek out the Lord ourselves, And that we will press through whatever we got to press through to get back to the Father ourself. It's not enough to t for me to tell you, okay, you're back with the Father. You're saved. You don't, that doesn't help you until you know it. Till you know that you have been received. And once you know that you're received, nobody can take it away from you. You don't need all the doctrine and preaching and teaching about how to do this and how to, and if you've done this, you're right. If you've done this, if, you, if you've been, if you've made this, if you say the magic words, Jesus come into my heart. Or if you've been baptized the right way, dunk, sprinkle, slapped in the face with a wet rag, whatever they do, you know, poured water. If the baptism, that's, none of that's even an issue anymore if you know you've been received. See, religious people come up with all this stuff of sacraments and, and antics that you go through. And if you do this, then that's going to cause you to be received. Nothing causes us to be received except the Father's receiving us. <laughs> and uh, we have to go to the Lord. And it's an awesome thing when you finally understand that Jesus has come to receive you unto Himself, and that where He is, you are also. That's what He wants you to understand. I know we have all failed. We've all stumbled. We've all missed many opportunities. But the Lord said, be filled with the Spirit that you can redeem the time. Be filled with the Spirit. And the Spirit of the Father has come to each one, to everyone that He has called unto Himself. Those who will receive Christ Jesus as Lord of their life and His gift of salvation have an opportunity also to receive through a willful surrender the Spirit of the Father upon you. Don't stop. Don't just as... Do the religious stuff and the church stuff and just take one step and okay now, okay now what what about you? Well, you know the one of the biggest hindrances 
that people face is leaning to their own understanding. Trying to understand every little step and every little nuance of the Word of God and the Word of the Spirit to us. Trying to understand every little thing before we will actually surrender to the person of the Lord. It would be pretty annoying if, um, if I ask you, if one of you to come, come in uh, uh, help me with a project, for instance. Let me do it this way. Come on, help me with a project. And, uh, and I start asking why. What are we going to do? What am I supposed to do? One more question. I'm going to tell you to shut up and just come on. <laughs> All right? And sometimes we're always, oh, what about this? What about that? What about this, Lord? What about... And, and, and the Lord will call us Martha and says to us, you're worried about a bunch of stuff. Be quiet. There's one thing necessary. <laughs> Sit at my feet. Come to me. Listen to me. You don't need to know the end of the project. You just need to know the next step. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. Follow. Learn. Well, well Lord, because you're learning how to be accepted into the house and participate in the house and to know that you are received into the house. That you're not an orphan. You're not cast out. You're not on your own. Your own. But God has received you. Have you received Jesus? That's the question. Have you received Jesus? Yes, I prayed Jesus come into my life. But has He received you? And you know what most church folks, oh, I don't know. I don't know if He's received me because, you know, I got this wrong in my life and that wrong. You know, I just, I've, (laughs) my, my. Religion will kill you. Understand that you and I are the house of the Lord. All right, let's, let's, God's building His house. How about this, if you'd understand? And each of us are rooms in the house. Each of us are a part of that house. And here's, here's the good thing. Since He is building His house, He does not leave us in the condition He found us in. He repairs us so that we fit in to His house. If we will let ourselves be repaired. If we'll stop following all the teachings and doctrines of what people are saying and follow the Lord. Follow His Word. Listen to the Spirit. He's quite capable of getting us there. Many people's faith and I put that in quotations, has been formed by the opinions of people. They they define their faith by what people say, by what doctrines people preach, or what denomination they're in, or what teaching is going on. They define themselves and identify themselves with a particular brand. Paul, I thought, took care of that when he says, who's Apollo? So who's, who's Paul? He said, we're just workers. We're workers. We're, you know, don't say I'm of Paul. I'm, I'm, I'm of Apollo. So I'm of this. I'm of that. We're of Christ. I thought he took care of that. <laughs> but there are a lot of people that want to keep you out of the loop because they'll say things, well, you know, it's it's... It's nothing of you. And I understand what, you're try- what some people are trying to express. The gift of salvation, the redemption, righteousness is of God. We couldn't add to it, okay? We couldn't do anything. Jesus did that. But in order for that gift to be ours, we've got to come out. It's called repentance. Come out of the foreign place and go to the Father and be received by the Father. The Father came to the prodigal and and 
saw him at a distance and ran, and it says he kissed him and loved on him and put a robe on him and shoes and a ring, had a party, he received him. Do you know that you're received by the Father? Do you know that, I'm just asking a simple question that I heard this morning before I woke up. That I was to ask today, do you know that you are received by the Father? For you see, since he's building his house, the Bible says many places, but Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 6, it says that we are the temple of the house. We're the house of God. The same word that should be used. We're the house of God that houses the presence of the Spirit of the Father, or the Spirit who is the Father. How's that? We are the temple. We are the house of the living God. And listen to what, what that means. God said, I will dwell in them, walk among them. I'll be their God. They shall be my people. But it says you've got to come out. Be separate. Get out of where you were to come into the Father's house. Don't be homeless. Don't be living in the streets. Come to the Father's house. And listen to what he said. Come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Don't touch what is unclean. And I will receive you. That's what you need to know today. The issue is not whether you're good enough to, for, to receive Jesus. We, we were all sinners, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. What we need to know is, has He received us? Are we received by the Father? That we would call Him Father God and Jesus our Lord. Because He said, I will receive you and I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters. Hear that? So therefore, having this promise that He's going to receive us and be our Father, and we would be sons and daughters, He says, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the Lord, or, or completing our part of joining in fellowship, because the word is, can be interchangeable. Holiness and fellowship and relationship and being part of the Lord's house is all the same, expressing the same thing. Cleanse ourselves from the filthiness of flesh and spirit. Whatever the Holy Spirit convicts us of in our hearts are the things that we're to cleanse ourselves from. Okay, let me say that again. True repentance is that whatever the Holy Spirit convicts us of individually in our heart is the thing that we need to cleanse ourselves from. And most people don't do that. Because we've been taught to kind of wholesale everything. Like, here, here's this prayer and it's not that it's not true, but, it, but we, that's the way we deal with it, is that, Lord, forgive us of our sins. And, and okay, Lord, we're forgiven of our sins. But we don't deal with the trespass or the transgression that's in our heart. See, if I could just... Sub- with a carte blanche sign or saying, Lord, forgive me of my sins. That means, okay, the Lord forgave me of smoking dope. And I've never smoked dope. Oh, but I'm forgiven. What about lusting after women? Let's don't talk about that. I ask God, forgive me of my sins. Y'all want to get real? Huh? What about the thing that so easily besets us? 
What about the thing that really that gets hold of us? Oh, God's forgiven my sins, but that thing is, that is still... It's, a still, it's still a snare. So I'm asking that the Lord give us repentance. For the scripture says that he who names the name of the Lord turn away from iniquity. What, what do I need to turn to? You know, some people are not even brave enough to ask God this. They don't even take time. They don't want to get in the secret place because in the secret place, God will start showing you your heart. And why does He do that? Because He wants to heal us and restore us, not condemn us. We know we couldn't say anything in church because everybody there would make fun of us and condemn us and cast us out. Oh, sorry, so and so. You know what he did? You know what? Let's pray for some brother so and so because you know what he did? And we start. All out of a spirit of condemnation. No wonder people don't want to confess sin and come to the church. Because they've got a bunch of sinners who haven't confessed judging others. Oh, well, we don't want to talk about that, do we? <laughs> okay. Cleanse yourself. What do you cleanse yourself? From what the Spirit of God puts His finger on in your life. And you just do that one at a time. Deal with the thing that you need to deal with that has been a snare to your life. The Bible says that in the house there's all kind of vessels, but if you cleanse yourself from the latter, you will be a vessel of honor. Cleanse yourself from the latter things. For whatever is dishonoring the Lord, whatever is a snare. <clears throat> Today, we have a structure that's called church. We have a structure that simply gives an appearance of godliness. But it's built on the commandments and doctrines of men, basically. You say, babe, I, heard, I can hear it right now. No, we build on the Word. No, you build on your interpretation of the Word. You build on what you want the Word to say. You're not listening to the Word. All right, I well, okay. But most congregations are built according to the commandments and doctrines of men. And it's based on what Colossians says as an approach of don't touch, don't taste, don't handle, and, the, and the, can, Paul continues to say that it has the appearance of wisdom, but it has no power to overcome sin. How many of us have been stuck there? Believe in all, we believe the Bible. We, we've asked Jesus into our heart. Oh, God help us, but we're stuck with a snare. And that keeps us from feeling like the Father has accepted us and received us. <clears throat> but it's because He has received us, because we are forgiven by the power of the blood of Jesus, that we can deal with that and be cleansed of it and be released from that snare. Because true repentance <clears throat> in, in the eyes of the Lord, <clears throat> Psalm 91.3 says that we're delivered from the snare of the evil one, of the trapper. We're delivered from it. How long, Pastor Danny, have I got to deal with it till you know you're delivered from it? Deal with your heart. Deal with God. Keep going to the Lord. <clears throat> There's a scripture in 2 Timothy that says, we're praying that God would grant repentance that people would come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil. People to come to their senses and escape the snare. You can pray, oh God, forgive me, but no, you're not going to do anything till you get out of the snare. Cleanse yourself of filthiness. Are you hearing me? Deal with it. With what God is speaking to you about. And it's not, 
instead of trying to give an appearance that you're, oh, spiritually fine, but inside there's a snare, deal with that. Because the Father drawing you into His house will receive you, but He, can't re- he doesn't want you bringing your trash into the house. <laughs> when the prodigal came to the Father's house, he didn't bring the pigs with him. Okay, all right. There are many major influences from people, habits, attachments that you need to let go of in coming to the Father's house. Cleanse yourself from the latter. Call on the Lord out of a pure heart. Not a perfect heart, but a heart that just wants to know Him. The Bible says that the Word of God is powerful. It discerns the thoughts and intents of our heart because we must give an account to Him because He sees everything. It says that everything is open to His eyes. I can hide it from you, but I cannot hide it from Him. And the Lord is wanting me to deal with the snare, which is the thing I've been trying to I, I can hide from you, but can't hide from Him. In which the enemy has had access to my life, because that's keeping me from participating and joining in and being part of the Father's house. Because it's always my excuse. (laughs) It's always my reason why I can't. Why I can't pray. I can't read the Bible. I can't you can't even go to church. I can't worship in spirit and truth. Why? Because you know there's a snare there. Deal with it. There's grace. There's mercy. There's the blood of Jesus. Uh, Okay, so we're praying for people to come to their senses and escape the snare and not try to live according to the commandments and teachings of men, but go before the Father. How do you know that you you are accepted? Well, because you're set free from the snare. How do you know that you've got to deal with it? Everybody ready for this? The snare is still there. And if the snare is still there, get with God. He's calling you to Himself. He's not condemning us. He's not ridiculing us. He's not trying to get even with us. He's not trying to teach us something by the bad circumstances and and the suffering that we're experiencing because of the snare. Not God. We're experiencing all this junk because of the snare. And God's wanting to get rid of that, but we've got to cleanse ourselves. Oh God, do it. You've got to cleanse yourself. Right? Let's cleanse ourselves so that he rec- we know that we're received. Because we cannot hold on to, to the transgression and the snare and have fellowship with the Father. Take hold of His presence. Want that more than anything else. Be willing to let go. Jesus, it was very clear. Jesus said, you, turn, you lose everything to come to me. You, cannot, you can't serve God. You can't serve the true God and Baal. And all. You can't have mixed idols. You can't have stuff... You can't have a mixture. It's one. Because it's a snare to your soul. Deal with a snare. Don't excuse it. Deal with it. And God will give you grace to deal with it. Then you will know. Because the robe fits. So do do the shoes and the ring. Because you've been covered 
by the righteousness of Jesus. Don't believe this stuff that says, oh, you just forgive and you forgive and you just, you just got to put up with this the rest of your life. No, the scriptures called us to be clean and right and in fellowship. And you want that. Then you'll know you're accepted by the Father. And everything that I have to deal with from the point I know that I'm accepted and He has received me, He gives me power to deal with it. But I'm not dealing it trying to get back to the Father. I'm dealing with it as a son and daughter of God in His house. And I've got the authority to deal with it because of Him. I'll make this little statement again as I close this. When I was a baby, my mother used to wash me. When I became of age, I began to wash myself. Let's stand up. Pray this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I ask today for strength and courage, no fear, to deal with the snare in my life. Cleanse me and heal me in Jesus' name. Amen.